I can finally。我想二十四个确定现在都留灯的话，是你们的一种认可。恭喜你进入到了男生群里，上去灭掉二十二盏灯回来。All right, what's up, everybody? You all know who I am. Let's get right into it. Today, we're going to talk about successful people and what their childhoods were like. When you look at their accomplishments as adults, 有好多东西现在都不 applicable 了 But 他们小时候 what kind of thoughts did they have when they were young people? You know, 他们的家长是什么样？他们的 environment 是什么样？ We can still 借鉴 from that 见解借鉴借鉴 from that today. 第一个人他们说的是 Richard Branson. If you haven't heard of him before, you've probably been living under a rock. 四百多家公司，航空、航天、火车、音乐、媒体、手机，什么都有。He's got everything, right? Just an amazing guy. 但是他小时候，他 he wasn't always that high flying. 他小时候 he had dyslexia, first of all. 所以他读书就是读的特别慢。有 dyslexia 的人，这字母都在晃悠，都在变呀，或者是换位置什么的。你看着咱们看着读，应该能猜出来吧？但是对小孩说，刚开始学读书的人，这本来还没认字呢，你就这字就在动了，是吧？非常难。他妈呢也说过，就是我们 ninety nine percent sure he was stupid and one percent sure he was special。他妈自己都说。He wasn't a child everyone would have wanted to have. You know, just after he became successful, his mother said, "Always in school, first in the class." But I want to share three things. His book, the first page, three things that he changed in his childhood that made him who he is today. His parents always put his opinion on his children as equal. Hey, pal, you ready? Can you pick me up at six thirty? Life can be hard, buddy. Okay. 爸是个律师，然后呢，把他的 cases 带回家的时候，把他带回家，跟他孩子讨论，讨论 pornography， 讨论 legalization of drugs。孩子说 ，We didn't know what exactly those things were. We just discussed them. Our parents wanted us to have an opinion. I'm here. I'm here. Too late. I'll go for five minutes. Gotta feed the meter. That's a meter. His parents were the kind who rarely gave them advice they didn't ask. 希望孩子独立，不自私。第二件事，他们做就是特意了 ，did character building exercises, physical exercises, and also social things to build character in their kids. I'm fine. All right, guys, focus with me. 他四岁的时候，他就特别 shy. 一有大人来，他就藏他妈背后，哎，特别害怕。My husband and I would not allow them to be shy. We said, "Look, if you're shy, you're just thinking of yourself." So we had to make them say the only way not to be shy is to put the other person at their ease. Do anything you like. Give them a lolly if necessary. You know, do anything, but forget yourself. You selfish if you're shy. So it worked. 四岁的时候呢，他妈开车早上起来带他出去买完菜，五公里离家里，说：“儿子，你从这儿认识回家的路吗？”他说：“嗯，应该认识。”说：“好，下车自己走回家，得问路，要问大人路，自己走回家。”十个小时以后，哥们到家了，他妈都挺着急的 ，right？ But after that, he said nothing else was hard after that. Now his mom might be onto something here. 日本人。那么从小五六岁就让孩子锻炼，自己出去去买个东西去啊，给妈带点菜回来什么的。There's even a show about this. My first errand. Hi, Tasha. In which young children are given neighborhood tasks and then secretly filmed as they set about them alone, sometimes even with a younger sibling in tow. My first errand is appealing because all Japanese people have had that experience of having their parents entrust them to do some simple job. Or they leave the house on their own and they come back to the house on their own, and it's funny. This is regular. Japanese kids, they are just small students. They are going to school. They are normal. This is normal. You see, Japanese families encourage their children to travel to and from school alone every single day. As weird as they are, I think we have something to learn here from the Japanese people. 要不然咱们怎么在 world stage 上 keep fucking them. All right, back to Branson. He was 11 years old. His mother said, 
毅力和方向感对男孩很重要。天黑了，给他蹬起来，说 ：“We pack our lunch， 有几个 sandwich， 一个苹果。你蹬自行车八十公里的地儿，咱们有一亲戚，蹬去他们家，然后明儿回来。然后呢，路上找水喝，路上自己找水喝，没给你 pack 水沉。他蹬去了，第二天回来他就想，肯定我妈给我一大 party。到家之后一看，就他妈一个人在家切菜呢。妈就说：怎么样啊？”他感觉特棒，他说好，赶紧去邻居家。他还问我呢，你儿子跑哪儿去？我说他一会儿就回来了，赶紧去他家帮他切木头去。他妈妈特别怕他 self c e n t e r 怕他 selfish。他们家里老有客人，他就说 ，Richard 就说我从小我们就知道，客人的 priority， 别人的 priority 比我们自己都高。在教会有一次，他妈让他说，哎，你坐在这小孩旁边，他很 lonely， 没有什么朋友陪他。然后坐了一半，就找他朋友去了，坐在朋友旁边，回家。Yeah! Yeah! Yeah! And this helped him. This unselfishness, 不光是想自己 ，helped him because all right. 他有 dyslexia， right？ 他读书特别差，倒数最后。但是他十六岁的时候，第一家公司开的是个出版社，他出版的是一个学生杂志。他们几个高中同学办了两年，对，采访了好多大腕的记者呀，还还挺成功。The point is， he don't become who he is without knowing how to communicate， how to empathize， how to serve， and finally how to lead people。That's exactly what his mom taught him。I just find these stories。Really inspiring because you 看这些成功人，你看他们做这那做那，跟咱们没有什么关系。但是他们小时候环境、小时候的想法、小时候的这种 character traits 是我们可以学到的。你现在我们作为年轻人仍然可以学到的。我们可以 copy that and make ourselves better, build our character in the same way. And maybe one day we'll be interviewing you. OK， 这一期就到此为止。咱们微博上见，给我留言，告诉我你想看到什么样的信息。订阅我们的微信公众号，帮我转发。最后，祝大家新年快乐 ，and especially in these times， 支持国产，支持咱们的小年轻，咱们的后浪。